This is for everyone. The recording has started. Okay. Ok Marco, siete pronti? Tutto a posto? Sì, sì. quando vuoi. Ok, allora in diretta tra 3, 2, 1. Ok, uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, I am uh, Marco Ponsetti and I welcome you to this TMS seminar, uh, which is part of the COVID-19 special issue of the TMS, for which I am the guest editor. In the last two events we talked about medical uh, issues with uh, Dr. Andrea Palladino uh, for the data analysis side and with uh, Dr. Nicola Petrosillo from uh, the Spallanzani Institute uh, for the clinical aspects. And this time we shift gears and talk about another important related issue which is the economic part of the question. And uh, I will now give the virtual floor to Pier Giorgio who will introduce our very special guest for today. Thank you. Ok, Marco, can you hear me? Yeah. Ok, thanks. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for uh, being here. It is my pleasure to present you Dr. Francesco Spanedda, Chief Brand Officer of Tun SPA, which is probably the most famous brand in ceramics. So, you know, Dr. Spanedda is doing a great job there. Let me take this opportunity to thank him for being here with us in today's TMS seminar. Dr. Spanetta graduated in economics and obtained the authentic Pubblicità Associati Master in Business Communication at the Caposcari University in Venice. Then he began his career in the world of consumer goods consultancy and gained his professional experience in luxury and fashion multinationals. He currently holds the role of CBO at Tun SPA, the international market leader in ceramic products and gift, where he manages the area of product development, brand marketing and licensing. We did not choose to net random through so Dr. Francesco Pandotti, which we thank immensely for his help in organizing this webinar. We knew that Toon was running now studies to understand what will happen after COVID-19 on an economic standpoint. Furthermore, Toon is an Italian company that is also involved in charity work through the Lane Toon Foundation, the first studios in Italy that offers a free regressional therapy service through clay modeling. This service is offered to kids of 21 hospitals with the help of more than 500 volunteers. So we really don't mind having a company that also cares about charity work and not only money. Uh, Pier Giorgio, you sorry, your, your camera is not active. Can you, you can activate it. Thank you. Ma, my? Yeah, camera. <coughs> web ah, okay. Mm. Excuse me, Marco. Okay. Okay. I can uh, okay, yeah, okay. Go okay. <laughs> excuse me. About today's talk, uh, thanks to the study conducted in house and to publish the available database, Dr. Spanetta will tell us about world economy, the wake of COVID-19, global consequences, and example of Tune reshaping the present for a new future, so that we can better understand the socioeconomic impact of COVID-19 on a national and worldwide scale. Ok, dottor Spanetta, eh, thanks again and you can uh, start uh, with your presentation. Many thanks. So, I would like to share my screen and say hello everybody, first of all, and uh, thank you for being here. Uh, just a moment, please. Here it is. Right, my camera is turned off now. And uh, please confirm me that you can see my presentation. Can you see it? Yes, perfect. Thank you. So I will start with this tough, I have to say tough, tough, tough uh, uh, COVID-19. Okay. Uh, when we 
think about the, the COVID-19, uh, we need to understand what is the economic impact of, on, and debt connections, the debt and social distancing interaction and the business impact, of course, of the, of the COVID. Uh, just to give you an idea, there is a sort of circle, negative circle, uh, with a strong impact on the supply. So the supply chain, which is the chain that allow all of, all of the companies to, uh, to sell the products. Uh, the demand, because of course, uh, we'll see later on on uh, different charts, uh, what is the impact according to the different market segments. And for sure, uh, there are some segments uh, negatively affected by the COVID as well as someone that, you know, they are gaining power on the market. And then we need to speak about the financial market shock, which is another big deal. Uh, but the main uh, word is shock because we're not speaking about, you know, a simple, uh, very and very uh, reasonable economic and and also we cannot foresee what is the, 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 the actual impact. We're just trying to understand more or less what will be the, the final result of the COVID-19, uh, according also to the fact that uh, we are speaking about the first part of the, of the virus, and uh, we're just speaking about a, a potential, hopefully not, but I'm not sure about that, uh, new uh, strengthen of the, of the virus on September. So we will be not sure about the situation, but just to give you an example, we're just uh, saying that if the, the COVID will, will come back in Italy, to Italy on September, we will probably foresee a decrease of the GDP, what we call in Italy PIL, which is an index of uh, productivity of the entire country that will go down compared to the, la to the last year of the 14%, which is a a, a huge, huge tragedy, uh, economic-wise. Uh, from this circle, you can understand that uh, starting from the financial market to the growth decline, so all the growth that is considered as part of the development of the economy, all the investments will, uh, will fail and will fall for, for sure, the jobs will decline, we will not have enough money uh, to pay, uh, to, to respect the contract, and so on. So there is a negative circle, uh, what we call vicious circle and financial crisis that will affect the entire market, not only the Italian one, but I'm speaking about the entire world market. Uh, just to give you an idea uh, about the single market segment, we've noticed that on travel and transportation industry, the decline was a, a reflection of the isolation of people, but it's just a decline, it's a drop, it's not properly some, a shutdown as we have experienced it on a leisure and hospitality and on manufacturing. And, uh, there, but there is also a, a good segment, the food, grocery, household and living products, whether uh, Tune is competing at the moment and their home entertainment, where there is a, a strong growth. When we, when we speak about grocery, we are speaking about supermarkets, just to give you an example. Uh, the COVID-19 impacted for sure on the consumer confidence. There, was, there is a, a strong and higher uncertainty about the future. This will affect the consumption, but for sure there is a, a strong change on the behavior of the consumer. For example, we've noticed all the growth on the online segments. And the government efforts are focused on the mitigation of the risk of the COVID, uh, just putting some money in the market and try to understand how to manage and uh, uh, in a certain way sustain the industry on a short-term period. This is a, the typical curve of a, a recession that we all know. There is an L shape of the curve. And uh, what we need to do now as a government is just to reduce this uh, L according to the possibility to sustain the industry. At the moment, the, it's mandatory uh, for the European market, for example, but also for the American one uh, and the Chinese one. Uh, to put money, fresh money on the market. So 
the financial and the monetary part of the of the uh, of the of the strategy is the most important one. Uh, as well as we need to consider also the timing where government will make the intervention effective on the market. For example, in Europe, Germany has been one of the first markets uh, to start a, a monetary uh, policy to sustain the industry. Just think about uh, Lufthansa uh, financial uh, uh, sustain from the from the from the German government. Uh, in Italy, we have a different situation because at, at the moment, as you can read and know, there is a certain delay, and this delay can kill a lot of industries. But if I if I take a step back and I consider, for example, uh, the past. Uh, I heard uh, an interesting interview this morning on uh, Radio 24, which is the radio of Il Sole 24 Ore, the, the, the most relevant financial newspaper in Italy. There was a sort of a parallel between the actual situation and the, and the very popular sentence from Mario Draghi, which was, whatever it takes. This is the same moment, and whatever it takes is the same sentence said by the, uh, the uh, European uh, uh, responsible for a financial policy, uh, which is which comes from Germany. Uh, so very strange to hear at the moment, which is more or less the same uh, as uh, Mario Draghi uh, did in the in the past, where there was the the big crisis, the big financial crisis after. Uh, the the strong uh, attack to the to the economy due to the you know uh, the expansion of the subprime uh, uh, effect in the U.S. market. Uh, the GDP is uh, is very complicated to uh, to you know to foresee at the moment. The scenario says that uh, actually we are between the on the on the Europe is actually between the eight and the twelve percent drop compared to the last year, as well as in Italy, we will probably uh, drop down from 9 to 11, and the growth, the expected growth for the 2021 will be around 5 to 7 percent, 6, 7 percent. This growth, I have to remember to all of you, will not compensate the loss of 2020. So it's something like uh, going back to 2019 or less and uh, we're just missing two years. At the end of the day, I think that two years is the minimum uh, drop that we need to expect from this virus. Just to give you another example, the Chinese government declared something like the 1.8 plus, plus 1.8 percent compared to the 2019, which is a mess for them. Uh, I have to say that uh, the, 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 the GDP growth for a Chinese market normally is around plus six, plus seven percent. Uh, so for them, it's a big, big drop, as well as they, they consider it at the moment as the natural uh, consequence of a crisis. But for sure, there is an interesting uh, aspect uh, uh, according to the behavior of the, the, of the Chinese consumer, which is the uh, the what I can the shopping revenge. Uh, they, they they can have a sort of a, um, the, the the revenge shopping is the the typical uh, uh, reaction to the to the COVID. It was the same when uh, they have experienced the the SARS uh, the first SARS uh, uh, virus. Uh, after the lockdown, the Chinese people started to to buy a lot. It was the same in the U.S. after a certain period. Uh, uh, when there was the uh, the, the 2000 uh, uh, problem com related to the to the twin towers, uh, so there is an an effect a positive effect effect on consumption uh, to consider, uh, which actually is not so clear in Europe. I I don't feel at the moment, uh, and I don't foresee any kind of revenge shopping activity from the European consumers. They are more, uh, I have to say, careful about the future. They're very worried at the moment, so we don't expect in Europe the same positive effect on uh, consumption that you're actually experiencing in China. Uh, let's point. Uh, let's focus now on the uh, on the on the global uh, chain disruption. Uh, this affected more or less all the industries. 
the production has been cut at the moment, uh, and uh, even if we have restarted to produce, there is a lack of raw materials to consider. And uh, the, the, the key point and uh, a, a strength point, and a strength, the, the, the strength of many companies is represented by flexibility and diversification on the supply chain. This is the only way how to proceed if we want to uh, overtake this uh, uh, particular moment. Flexibility means, mean, means more or less have more partners, make, for example, a sort of a, what we call insourcing. So in the past, we've been all uh, uh, affected by the, the trend uh, on the uh, you know, externalization of the production out of Europe. At the moment, the production in Europe is becoming more and more important because of this crisis. Uh, because uh, for the, from, from a supply chain point of view, it's easier to produce in Europe and reduce the lead time of uh, production in order to maintain promises to the customers instead of waiting, for example, for, from 40 to 60 days for the transportation of the product from the production in Asia to Europe. The second issue is the cash flow. We need more money on the economy. We need money to maintain and sustain our uh, weaker companies and also to sustain the impact in terms of uh, occupation of people. And from that point of view, at the moment, we are experiencing a, a sort of credit crunch on the, from, from, from the Italian bank side. The last point is the acceleration of the digital, digitalization. Uh, business need to be agile for sure. Uh, we need digital infrastructures and the companies are, you know, at the moment experiencing the importance of the, of, for example, the smart working as a, you know, an important and positive impact on uh, the business. So digital transformation, as well as omnichannel transformation, is becoming more and more important. Let's have a look now on the reaction on Toon. First of all, health and safety. Uh, from that point of view, I have to say that uh, COVID uh, affect, only affected two people uh, in Toon officially, already uh, you know, analyzed and certified. One of them is, unfortunately, because I'm, I've been affected by the virus, but our main uh, uh, target was to keep our people health and safe. That's why we decided, for example, to close our, our retail stores. As you know, we have a strong retail chain. A few days before the official, uh, you know, the official government uh, uh, low about the closing of uh, the, the shutdown and the lockdown of the entire retail network. Uh, from what we call uh, people and welfare, we have to say that we have tried at, as much as we could to maintain the same uh, level of, uh, of, uh, of people inside the company, according to a very uh, you know, strong welfare policy. Third, we needed to guarantee the business continuity and to invent a different way to, from one side, uh, uh, keep safe the financial structure of the company and, on the other hand, trying to transform what is actually a big problem into a big opportunity. Uh, as I said, uh, we have just been closed for 2.5 months, uh, which means uh, around 70 million euro of, miss, of missing cashing, a huge cash impact, as I told you. Uh, we have tried to find different measures to mitigate the, the financial stress, cutting costs, uh, uh, plans, uh, salary plans for, uh, for people, payment schedule reshape, tax and banks obligation postponement. This is you know, the A, B, what we call ABC uh, in terms of financial uh, intervention. Then the continuous refocusing of the scenarios has helped us to 
uh, you know, try to get ready for the restart of the business. This was very important for all of us. Uh, a big opportunity, I said before, because first of all, the market has changed. It's changed a lot in terms of e-commerce, for example. Uh, before the COVID, the 8% of family used to buy products on e-commerce. After the COVID, there are in only two months, we recovered two points. We are at more than 10%. And I have to say that in June, we are now around 10, 15, and 20% according to different months. We foresee a 10% at the end of the year. And there are some categories like food, grocery, there are growing a lot in the market. The food, you know, was around plus 20, but I can I have to say honestly that on the first month it was plus 30. And we all experienced it, the, the difficulty on uh, finding, uh, finding uh, uh, good slots uh, to, you know, order online our standard, uh, you know, shopping for groceries. Uh, Two million of new consumers in Italy. Sorry for this article, it's from the from Criteo Netcom. Uh, this is an important source. And honestly, it was interesting also to have a look on the Italian uh, impact of the COVID. Uh, this is very good. It's a very good news because many people that never uh, buy before on the web, uh, you know, have decided according to this uh, this area this era to start the, to consume on uh, online which means that we have a new opportunity for all of them and we are opening a new market honestly uh, pet care fresh food uh, and uh, house care and uh, you know personal care products are all on a triple digit growth uh, lockdown for our stores mean something like zero sales but for the e-commerce point of view, the meaning was slightly different. Uh, I have to say triple digit growth uh, plus 34 of new digital consumer on our site. And we foresee, as I told you before, a 10% of total weight of e-commerce versus uh, 2020 uh, forecast. The multi-channel against the omnichannel. Tune is an omnichannel company. The difference between a multi-channel company and an omnichannel company is the fact that both companies can manage different stores, physical, web, social media, and mobile. But all these uh, different platforms are completely separated on the multi-channel approach, where on the omnichannel approach, we try to connect uh, the, the, the consumer experience in the center of this loop in order to offer to him a, what we call a seamless experience. So we, we are just working to give the same experience on the physical and digital touch point for the consumer. For us, the road to omnichannel is very important. With 2020 COVID, we have decided to accelerate this process. The click and collect is a typical service of the omnichannel channel or omnichannel uh, channel uh, touch point. Uh, then we have uh, organized a, a sort of pre-booking visiting store. So we have decided to create with an app a sort of uh, relationship one-to-one -one with our stores in order to have a safe experience inside the store. Then we are just going to launch some product subscriptions so our consumer can have the opportunity to buy the product before the official launch by paying a certain subscri subscription offer. And then we have also empowered our Toon Lovers program, which is a, what we call a, a, a fidelity program. We have 1.3 million lovers on our program with 150K top members that normally pay to be part of a special segment of our uh, fidelity program. But we've also worked on the product-wise, launching some new ideas. First of all, Tune is very recognizable from the decorative products. We have decided to invest a lot on functional products and on new functional products uh, uh, according to the trend of the kitchenware. 
which is a very important trend, uh, considering that many people have decided to, uh, for example, uh, work on recipes and uh, create something like master chef uh, plates, the dishes for the for the families. This has been a very important trend that. Uh, we need to uh, um, exploit according to new functional products. Then we have decided to work on the value of the product, which means that moving from decorative to functional, we give a reason why, which is very concrete, very rational to the customer. But then we've decided also to implement a new range of products able to be more achievable from, from the customers. New product ideas, new product meanings already launched by reshape in terms of uh, uh, storytelling and then we have created some personal care products just to give you an example from the functional product we've worked on then uh, for example pizza cutter uh, an input but this is just a simple example or for the price for value we have worked on a new collection daisy bloom a uh, collection that we have decided to launch on March, and it will be on the point of sales on on uh, July. Uh, so after four months, we normally take not less than eight months to launch a product. We have dramatically reduced the time in order to get ready for those new needs, those new consumers, and give them a new product able to satisfy their needs. Then there is a, you know, a, a very singular ideas about the, the shopper with the silver fiber. As you know, the silver fiber is recognized on the market for the power, I have to say, uh, to give to the uh, consumer a safety feeling in terms of uh, uh, sanification. This is the, the, the reason why we decided to put the fiber, the, the silver fiber on, uh, on, our, on our shopping bags. Then there was an angel. Angel is one of our best icon. It's the most iconic product of Tune since the very first beginning in 1950. And we have renamed and created a particular storytelling for our angel calling, calling the, the angel of renaissance, of the rebirth. And last but not least, a new mask that we have launched uh, just one week ago, two weeks ago, honestly. The mask, the mask is not actually on the point of sale, but with a pre-booking activity, we have sold it out more than 20,000 masks. So there are 20,000 people waiting for the mask that they have just already purchased uh, two weeks ago, and we're just producing new quantities for the customer. And last but not least, the communication. Ripartiamo, which means uh, restart. Uh, you know, it's a gimmick between restart and I love you. Uh, it's the way how we want to, we have created a, a sort of new hashtag for Tune, able to give the, uh, the chance to the consumer to feel the company as a family company. Tune has a, a concrete and solid, I have to say, experience in terms of family of feelings and restart, reinvent, and ripartiamo has been the way how we started our new brand campaign in order to involve our people and make them feeling more close to the brand. This is it, guys. Uh, it was just a short sum up. I promise to stay with you for a, a, a half an hour, and I hope that you have enjoyed my presentation. Then I stop. start my camera okay okay thanks again dr francesco spanata for this excellent overview and uh, let me take this opportunity to thanks also the managing director Toon, dr francesco pandolfi sara pazzanella pierre of Toon, and to Toon as a company for their availability and uh, thanks thanks very much and now i will to give the floor to dr Ponsetti for the questions Okay, Marco, can you read? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Pedro. Thanks. And, uh, so let's go to the questions section. So we have the first from uh, Michela Ciocca. Is there any company that has had an economic increase due to the virus? You partially covered this, but maybe you want to be yeah. more specific? Hmm. Think about, for example, Glovo. All the food delivery and the home delivery, you know, 
completely exploded. I, I've spoken also yesterday with the uh, country manager of, uh, for example, uh, in uh, a company which is the competitor of McDonald's. Uh, and he said to me, uh, you know, according to this crisis, we have, we have, we have experienced an incredible growth due to the, uh, to the e-commerce and the home delivery. Uh, just to give you a, a you know a, a stupid idea, there is one restaurant in Milano, one chain restaurant is very small. It comes from Puglia, Il Mannarino. Mm -hmm. During the <coughs> lockdown, these trends, these restaurants, growth about the plus thirty percent compared to the previous periods. They have transformed their uh, maids into drivers. So. Uh, you know, you have to restart, to rethink, reshape your business. If you do it, you can find opportunities. And uh, this is how we also manage the e-commerce in tune. We are growing uh, plus uh, triple digit because of that. Uh, it's not only a matter of, uh, you know, being available with, with a platform. You need also to reshape your offer, reshape your services, trying to be flexible and adapt your uh, uh, product offer to the customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a general principle that applies also to, to biology, yeah. to whatever, yeah, to evolve, to survive. This is yeah. Darwin, so. Yeah, it's Darwin. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's Darwin. Thanks mm -hmm. to Darwin. <laughs> okay, we have a comment from uh, Professor Teti, the chair of the TMS. Uh, how do you think reducing taxes will, have people, will help people spending more and help economy? Is this feasible? Wow, uh, big question. Honestly, in Italy, we say first we need to pay taxes <laughs> before to reduce. I, I, I know, I'm not sure at the moment. I think that taxes are, are a problem. And uh, I think also that uh, according to this policy, it seems that we, we are the government is reducing the taxes. But don't remember that this month we're going to pay for the house and they are suspending taxes until September. But I cannot figure out the reaction of the market after September, where they're gonna, the government will start to, you know, ask again taxes for taxes, and they also will cut all the investment in terms of uh, uh, monetary policy to sustain the occupancy. I I feel that on September we will have a shutdown of so many small companies because the government in Italy has been concentrated on. Uh, a size which is a very small size, 5 million revenues to receive, sustain from the, from the, from the, from the government. You need, as a company, you need to have a, a, a full revenue on 2019, which is more or less around 5 million revenues. This is a very small shape. And my, my, my worry at the moment is that many companies, you know, that are, that are, or on a size which is completely different, for example, from 5 to 20, will suffer a lot of this crisis. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have one more from uh, Silvia Di Virgilio. Uh, as you said earlier, in Europe, we haven't seen yet a positive effect on the consumption. Why are, yeah. uh, why are we more careful compared to non-European people? And how can Italians in particular regain confidence in buying in shops rather than online? Well, I think it's a matter of culture. Uh, you know, China is growing so fast during the last years. And uh, of course, they have a crisis. But on the other hand, they will close this year at plus 1.8% of growth of the GDP, which is different from minus 11 or minus, or minus 12 of the Italian uh, drop. Uh, so there is first a cultural uh, difference between uh, all of them. The, the Chinese economy is an, a, a fast-growing economy. The salary rate is going fast, plus 20, plus 15, plus 20 per year. Where in Europe we are, you know, uh, assuming a, a, at least the same level of salary. But I, but I feel that we're gonna the salary will drop down this year. Then we are, we don't have a growth of the economy, but we will have a, a, a drop of the economy. And then we would have another effect, which, which is linked to the fact that we are older than the Chinese people. And, uh, you know, the average customer, interesting customer, online customer in China is around uh, 18, 25 years old. In Italy, this customer is older. And where you, 
become old, probably you are, I'm not, I cannot say that you, your intention to buy is, is completely different, but for sure, you will, in a certain way, culturally think about the fact that you have experienced so many crises in the past. Think about the 73, 78 for the petrol. Think about 2001 with the, with the problem, with the problem, with the Twin Towers uh, tragedy. All those crises have affected the European market more than the Chinese one, which is pretty new to crisis. So uh, the, 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 you know, the, the approach in terms of behavior is completely different. Thank you. Uh, one more from uh, Pier Giorgio. Uh, in your opinion, uh, which nations will recover in the shortest time and which ones will have the greater long-term consequences? Huh. Big question. Hard to say. If I, if I, you know, if I think about Europe, for sure Germany is ahead, as usual. The more organized, the more rational, uh, they are flexible, they have a strong industry, they export more than they import at the moment and this is very important because they can you know continue to grow according to the uh, to the to the export market and honestly italy what what they, they call in the past the piigs countries like portugal spain italy greek they have economy economy which are uh, weaker than uh, germany or france and uh, Honestly, I, I feel that the, the crisis will affect more the, 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 the former PIIGS countries. Okay, thank you. Uh, one from uh, Professor uh, Salamida. My impression during the lockdown in Lombardy was that only the huge commercial, mo commercial malls that are located out of the city center have lost a lot of customers in favor of e-commerce and small city markets. On the other hand, in the USA, the decline of huge malls began already a few years ago. So COVID yeah. is probably only accelerating the same process. What do you uh, think? Well, I agree uh, to this vision. Uh, honestly, uh, you know, we, we, have, we have read in the past about the retail tragedy and, uh, and uh, also the, the, the shutdown of many important shopping malls in the in the US. Uh, the structure of the distribution in Italy is very different, honestly. At the moment, we have a, a, a big suffering for a big mall, big shopping mall, like for example, Arese in uh, close to Milan in Lombardy. Six million people is the, the, the big, uh, I can say the big potential customer area of Arese, which is the first commercial center in, uh, in, uh, in Italy. And they're suffering a lot because uh, in Italy, all our shopping malls are based on the grocery stores, big grocery stores, what we call ipermercati, stores uh, that have a surface which is uh, around plus 2,500 square meters. And e even if the, the grocery mar market is growing, it's growing on the medium level. It's not growing on the big surfaces at the moment. But on the other hand, big commercial, big shopping mall have the power, financial power to survive. I'm scared about the small shopping center in this moment. On the medium range, I think that they can survive because they have a, a, a strong uh, relationship with the territory and they have a, a, a sort of a good level of compromise between grocery and all the other store services. For example, in some areas, you cannot buy tune except for a, a, a shopping mall, a medium shopping mall because there is not a, a proper center of, of a city that can uh, uh, offer a, a tomb product. So I'm worried about the small. For the big one, I think that they can recover probably in two years. From the medium, I'm a bit scared at the moment. Okay, perfect. Uh, we have one from uh, Ilare Di Carlo. Actually, it's a double question, but you answered wow. part of it. So I, I will just read the part you didn't answer. Uh, how much does it cost for a small business to start and go online? Oh, it costs a good idea. More, you know, uh, to, to, to start online, it's not a big, 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 it's a, of course, it means that you need to have logistics, you need to have, but there are some good platforms online. For example, I'm thinking about Shopify, which is a, 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 
a sort of freeware platform. You can you can build up your uh, your internet e-commerce in uh, one day with Shopify. They can guarantee to you the all the security of the payments and all the rest. You need for sure to pay them commissions. But if you go through Shopify, you need only logistics. And logistics depends on uh, how many countries you want to uh, you want to uh, target as a as a uh, potential market. It means that you need to consider the weight of your product and the way how to ship the products. As bigger it is, as much you have to pay for logistics, for example. So it depends on the business model at this stage. And also on the way how you want to make e-commerce. You can make e-commerce starting from a, a production uh, point of view or starting like a marketplace. So if you go through a marketplace, you don't have to worry about logistics because you know you can create a marketplace, for example, giving the responsibility for logistic, the logistics directly to your partners. And you only need to capture some orders and then ship through the through your customers. So I, I don't have a, I don't have a, an answer for sure, but potentially you need only to invest on sometimes for creativity and sometimes to aggregate some some other brands. Great. We have one from Iona from Manchester. Uh, do you think that you will continue to adopt an omnichannel platform approach post lockdown? And do you think this will benefit your business? Yeah, for sure, for sure. The customer demands is um, is linked to the services that you are able to offer. At the moment, uh, you know, ship the product from the point of sale directly to my house, or ship the product directly to the house of my friend because it's a gift or make the click and collect as a service or creating new services like the CRM, which means uh, loyalty programs is the secret of the success of the brand. And if I look at the circular uh, customer journey of, uh, of each single client, I cannot think about the multi-channel strategy. Omnichannel is the future, is the present and the future. Great, thank you. So we have one more from uh, Professor Teddy. Do you, uh, don't you think that solid economy is based on manufacturing of essential things like cars or part of cars, phones, computer, etc., mm. that you can sell worldwide? How do your products meet this requirement? Uh, uh, the solid economy is linked to Germany at the moment. <laughs> they they produce a lot of cars more than uh, even if I have to say that the the FCA group is uh, at the moment. Which is not Italian, honestly. I have to say, I'm not sure he's American or is, uh, uh, you know, is uh, in the Netherlands uh, uh, group. But what I have to say is that uh, the solid product is not the only way to uh, to sell the product uh, at the moment. And we have so many examples in the market, like uh, Uber or uh, you know uh, Amazon. They're not. They're not a production-wise uh, uh, companies. They are only marketplace. They, you know, try to understand what what the customer wants and uh, try to find the right service to give to the customer at the right price. So, as I said before, a marketplace, a platform, can be a good idea as well as selling solid products. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so we have one from uh, Denise Boncioli. How much do you think that policies that take care of family issues, for instance, childcare, during the time of lockdown could help the recovery of economy? Do you have any example in your, in your company? Well, uh, honestly, as I said, I, I, I'm worried about the fact that in September in Italy, all will end and uh, if the, the government will not continue to sustain families we will have a drop of economy which is really uh, many uh, you know it, it will be more more dangerous than now because at the moment we are experiencing the shutdown but but the shutdown is a global shutdown i mean it's something that is linked to the to the different countries on september the market will be completely reopened and if families will not have to buy the, the, the power to purchase product because they're going to lose the, the, the work, for example, their, their job, 
the, the problem would be really very serious. For what concerns the tune situation, I have to say that uh, we have tried to combine the uh, uh, financial sustain in terms of uh, what we call uh, Casa Integrazione, which means an external help uh, of the government uh, to pay uh, the salary. But with the Casa Integrazione, it was not possible to recover the full salary of each single uh, jobber. So what we have done, honestly, is to cover the part that will, that has not been covered by the government in order to maintain the 100% of the salary for all our uh, employees. That's, uh, that's very nice. So uh, one from Andrea Giustini. Uh, don't you think a weaker euro with respect to other currencies could help export and boost European economy? Hmm. Uh, you mean, uh, you, you, I, I, I'm not sure to, to, to have understood. So the, the power of euro compared to the other, to the other currency? Probably is, uh, do you think we should... Uh, uh, Leave to the lira? <laughs> deva <laughs> no, devalue no. the euro, reduce the, the value of the euro in order to increase the export. Uh, this is an equation which is uh, easy to, uh, to do on, a, on an Excel uh, spreadsheet. I think it's tough considering the, the actual uh, reaction of, uh, for example, the US dollar. At the moment, uh, we, cannot be, we cannot act on a, an independent market. Uh, we can, uh, we can uh, work on a monetary policy, but we have also to understand what the other governments are doing at the moment. The euro is stable. Uh, you know, it's, it, at the moment, I, 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 don't, I don't, you know, I cannot foresee any changes about the, the, the US currency, the dollar currency. Okay, one from Michela Ciocca. During the lockdown, we noticed that the environment has recovered in terms of pollution. Do you think that companies are thinking of moving towards more eco-sustainable uh, directions? What does your well, company plan on this point of view? Yeah, this is, this is mandatory at the moment because all the uh, seed generation and also I'm sorry, and also the this is the Sarah's mobile phone. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, uh, that that you know the, the the pollution. I have to say the sustainable policy is very important, and uh, maybe during the COVID we have a, a little bit reduced our uh, attention to the to the sustainable uh, production. But at the end of the day, the demand from the Z generation to the uh, to the millennials is to have uh, more consciousness companies. And in a certain way, uh, what we are now experiencing from the racial point of view, think about the, the, uh, the, 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 the flood killings from the, from the, from the, from the cops, uh, talk to us that at this stage, sustainability, uh, equal rights, uh, and uh, you know, same opportunity for all of us is the sort of mantra. And we cannot say that uh, we can do something what we call a greenwashing. We, we try to let the people think that we are doing something sustainable. We need to do it now. There is no time, uh, uh, it, it's the proper time and uh, the demand on uh, sustainability is uh, more and more important. Yeah, I agree. I think this has been a reboot for uh, many, many completely, people. Many, many completely. Sectors. The yeah. greenwashing is something that cannot be considered. The Z generation can use the internet, can have more, uh, can have a stronger power of information than it was on the 90s, for example. On the 90s, you probably could say that uh, you are, uh, you know, producing, for example, uh, a green fuel. At the moment, you cannot say that you can produce a green fuel without proving to the people that it is a real green fuel. Of course, I cannot think that we can we can produce a tuna and a fuel. <laughs> far away, far okay. away from our experience and our main scope. Okay, one from uh, Silvia Di Vercilio regarding the new ideas. In shops, we use hmm. uh, now too many plastic gloves and also disposable masks. And yeah. We have seen in many reports that they end up in the sea yeah. eventually. Yeah. Does Ton uh, think about a more green solution? Yeah, yeah. We're always 
speaking and thinking about new solution, for example, we have uh, uh, dramatically reduced the plastic on our uh, um, uh, bulks. I mean, on the on the on the on the products that we ship to the to the customers, we are using recycled paper as much as we can. We are saving at the moment at this stage something like uh, what we call CO2 uh, compared to the production of uh, uh, oxygen of the end entire surface equal to the Central Park of New York. This is not enough for Tune, for sure. We need to work more for that. Uh, it's not easy, honestly, because plastic in from the logistic standpoint is very important to protect the products. Think about the fact that we are selling some ceramic products, which are very delicate, and we need to maintain them from scratches. And, uh, you know, the paper is very important for us. But there is a project of sustainability uh, which is a constant project that affect all our our products and we are also thinking about new products that can go in this direction that's fantastic uh, one from uh, fabiana from manchester there are several online retailers particularly clothing that have been criticized for cancelling large factory orders and refusing to pay despite the orders having already been yeah. prepared what is your opinion on this and how do you think companies can support the factories uh, that they source the, their product from this time to reduce demand? Uh, thanks for the, for, the, for the question. We have a, you know, a very silly uh, you know, situation in Italy. You probably read about that. Uh, there was a Paul McCartney concert planned in, uh, in Italy that has been cancelled. And uh, uh, you know, instead of giving back the money, uh, the, the organization decided uh, to give uh, the, a voucher to the customers. Then Paul McCartney posted yesterday a long post about the fact that it was not good, uh, that uh, saying that it was more fair to give the money back. You know, as a customer, I completely agree at first sight with the post of, uh, of uh, Paul McCartney. But then, sir, Paul McCartney, then I have to say that the, the answer from the D'Alessandro uh, Galli company, which is the organizer of the company, was that at this stage, they have tried to convince Paul McCartney to do a second gig in Italy, so a second date, and he said no. Then they said that they, they will, with, with the money that they have received, uh, they could, on a COVID period, guarantee uh, the level of employment and then if Sir Paul McCartney will not uh, uh, make the gig in the future they will give until one year so in 2021 uh, they will give back the money to the uh, to the customers so when we you know there are always both sides of the of the medal and uh, consumer wise we're always focused on the on one side which is, I pay for a service, I need the money back. But then we need also to consider the extraordinary uh, effect, the shock of the COVID, and the way how a company can react to protect the consumers, but also to protect the business. Because survival is the mantra during those months. And I cannot criticize, fully percent criticize, the organizer of the concert of the concert because of this uh, voucher, honestly. Okay, thank you for your answer. We have one more from uh, Ilari Di Carlo. Regarding the economy of the artistic sector, I have heard that theaters, small music labels and many museums are having serious economic problems. Are there possible solutions to help these sectors? I suppose it's more difficult in this case to start online solutions, although I'm thinking of Spotify. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I don't think there is, I think there is, in Italy, for sure, there is an issue about the online uh, uh, strategy of our museums. We are, I think, uh, 20 years back, uh, we're in 1980s, uh, maybe 40 years, uh, concerning this part. Just have a look on a, on a site of, a, you know, one museum, I can uh, let you choose from the, from the Italian offers. So I think that they can do more to promote, uh, to preserve, to 
for example, try to find uh, also financially some sustainable uh, uh, actions from customers. Uh, just, uh, you know, I'm just thinking about the fact that, uh, for example, on, during the COVID months, uh, there was a big growth on the charity area. And this is a way how you can collect money, uh, for example, to uh, sustain the, uh, the, 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 the restoration of some paintings or, uh, or some, some other products. I mean, some other, not products, they are masterpieces, okay? And I feel that the, the museum can can do more. And in Italy, we are uh, really on a you know on an era which is uh, far away from the 2020. Okay, that's uh, yeah, that's a good answer. Uh, I I think we have no more questions on the teams. We don't good. have any any questions on YouTube. So uh, I. I think we can join uh, Simone Ettore Salvati in uh, <laughs> saying that this was a really interesting topic and presentation. Uh, this is what he commented in the chat. Uh, we also all agree on this. Uh, I think you did an almost unbiased overview, a little bit of product placement, but that is uh, understandable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see the bear. Oh, this, is the bear. this is my teddy bear. This is my teddy bear. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Dr. Spanetta, for this really, really interesting overview. And uh, I will now ask you all to activate your cameras because we have to take a nice picture with uh, Dr. Spanetta. So please go ahead and activate your cameras if you have one. That's hello. Oh, we see a lot of people. See, it looks like we, we uh, there were the, only the three of us, but as you can see, there's a lot of people behind cameras. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, smile. <laughs> Great. Okay, fantastic. So, um, thank you again, uh, Dr. Spanetta. I will uh, now announce the next uh, seminar, which is uh, will be held by Angela Capocefalo next week. Same channels, same everything. Uh, and it will be about surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. So uh, a bit of a change of gears, <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm sure it will be as interesting. And I will also announce, as I as I did by email, that there, we are about to have a TMS Day of Science on the 16th of July. So uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with the posters or presentations. We also have some prizes, which are currently only symbolic prizes, but we're looking for sponsors. And uh, but, but we will have prizes on the biology side, on the chemistry side, on the physics side. So it will be like a mini congress, and I will see you all there. You're welcome to send your abstracts. Uh, I will send you more reminders. Don't worry. Uh, okay, so thank you again. Thanks to Tune. Thank you all for being here today, and uh, I'll see you next week. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.